oftentimes when you're when you're dating for years on years, that's not really a true commitment. There's some type of unsurety there about that person, and they're just there until you find the surety that you need in somebody okay. else. Today's guest is a licensed realtor in both Florida and Kentucky. With a passion for helping others, she truly uses that passion in real estate service. She truly believes that one of the most effective means of creating generational wealth is through owning a home and investing in real estate. I love that. She has a proven track record of facilitating community workshops in order to help educate potential homeowners in the areas of credit repair. We're going to talk about that today, financing and building equity and results driven and relocating families from all over the country, just to name a few. She carries the values of hard work, integrity, loyalty, and outstanding client service into every aspect of her client experience. Sounds like a wonderful marriage to me, <laughs> Brave Hearts community. Let's show <laughs> some love to Kimberly Lane. How are you doing this morning, Kim? I am great. I am great. Thank you for having me on. I feel very honored. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I, I see we, we follow each other on Instagram. I see your mm -hmm. content and I'm just like, why haven't why isn't she on the show yet? <laughs> you know, I want to make sure that we educate people uh, across not only just finances, but maybe homeowners and things of that nature. So I figured you would be the perfect guest for this topic. Let's jump into this because I want to respect your time. From the, okay. fir the first question is, can you debunk any myths about becoming a homeowner? Because I hear a lot of people on other podcasts and stuff. And they're like, oh, don't buy a property. It's better to rent. I've seen blogs and all this other thing. So can you just debunk some of those myths for me? I can. Um, let me address the rent real quick um, yeah. because that one just, um, I, if you're paying attention what's going on in the news and the media and with the government and the politics, like right now, renting has become um, a crisis for a lot of um residents because the rent the rent rate is exceeding mortgage rates and they are trying to you know do something about it because a lot of people right now that are not in a position to purchase a home are also in a position to not be able to afford the rental rate so if they can't afford rent how are you going to be able to afford a home so it's it's a it's a disservice to a lot of communities right now with renting now with some of the myth a lot of people are being told or they've heard or seen it or, or was taught that you know um you don't have to worry about all the maintenance of owning a home you don't have to worry about the property taxes well when you're paying rent you're not just paying a set amount uh, because the, the owner is renting you that property and they think that's that's just what they want. They're being kind and generous to you. They're making sure their taxes and anything extra, any overhead that they were they would incur is included in your rent. So technically, you are still paying those things. You are just paying it blindly and you don't know. Um one of the other myths I like to address, and when I think I've been addressing this all um, all of last year and coming into this year, um, we've, we've been having a lot of fluctuation with the interest rates. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are thinking, I'm going to wait till interest rates go down. Um, interest rates, they fluctuate all the time. And that's something where um, you're not going to be able to decide, hey, you know, this is the best time to buy a mortgage. Right now, interest rates are somewhere in the sixes. We've seen them get as high as the seven uh, as seven this year. Uh, with, during the time of COVID, maybe 21 or something, we saw them get as low as two. Well, in the 70s and the 80s, they've gotten as high as, um, I believe, 18%, right? So if you think about people buying homes in the 70s and 80s, they're paying 18% on a mortgage. So that's going to fluctuate all the time, but it did not stop people from purchasing and it shouldn't stop you from purchasing now. Lenders are becoming very creative as they have always been, but a lot of other lenders that haven't, um, they are able to push out all these lender credits. Um, they're jumping in and they're saying, builders as well, 
they're giving all these builders credits and, um, you know, they are helping the buyers out and they don't know that they are getting all these clothes or co clothing costs and the builders credits on the back end to help offset or buy down that that interest rate that, you know, we're just not used to having uh, within these last couple of years with that fluctuation. So I would say um, interest rates, you know, is not something that should deter anyone from purchasing a home because there are, you know, programs and great lenders out there that are assisting with the, that, in, that interest rate fluctuation. That's some great information. Thank you for addressing that because somebody's probably on the edge right now of should I rent or should I buy that whole thing? So yeah. I'm glad that you addressed that. I wanted to ask you about the benefits of good credit. And how does that play into becoming a homeowner? Because a lot of times, like, what kind of credit score do you need to uh, to purchase a home? Like, what is that number? What is that? Or is there a magic number? Well, the benefits of good credit um, mm -hmm. is more favorable to a mortgage uh, lender, right? Mm -hmm. When they look at good credit, this allows them to see how you handle debt, how responsible you are, right? You, you're trustworthy with what you're asking them to do far as lending that loan, you know, not just in home ownership, but any anyone that is going to want, you know, to look at your credit, whether it's a loan or credit card, or even with auto insurance, sometimes auto insurance, they run your credit. So it's very good to have good credit, um, you know, if you're looking to get anything and it's, and it's, far as mortgages, it's favorable because you will get a better interest rate. So the stronger the credit, the lower the interest rate um, that you can get. So your interest rate will be more attractive as your credit is more attractive to the lender. Mm -hmm. With credit score, typically around the board, lenders like to see a 620 minimum. Mm -hmm. There are programs um, and exceptions that you can get a a loan in the 500s. Um, it just depends on case by case, right? With the lenders and what they're looking for. Sometimes you may be required to have a higher um, down payment. Um, if you come in with a 580 credit score, um, some lenders have structured particular down payment programs or particular loan, loan types where they are taking a 580. So you can definitely get a mortgage um, in the 500s. Mm, interesting. Like you said, it, it'll be more likely a higher interest rate because. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this just from a relational standpoint. Like, when do you have the the credit score talk or, or the money talk? Do you talk about these things before you get in a relationship or after? Like, what are your thoughts on that? OK, so my thoughts on that is uh, this. I don't think that there's a time frame that you do it. I think once two people become comfortable talking about their finances and they decide that they want to be exclusive with each other and they start to become comfortable with the finances or even planning finances together, then let's talk about it. Um, it is like, it, it, it is sometimes a deal breaker. I've, I've heard in relationships, which I, I totally disagree that it should be. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, sometimes you hear someone say, oh, if they don't have good credit, then, you know, I, I can't date that person. I can't, <laughs> I can't be with that person. But that's, re it, to me, it's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. What, because, Let's say I let's say I, for example, I'm a I, I'm gonna say I'm an amazing person, mm -hmm. right? I'm not gonna say anything less about me. I know I'm an amazing, great woman. Preach, preach. <laughs> yes. And so let's let's just say hypothetically, I came out of COVID um and from a layoff. I lost my job or something. When when you when you when we went through what we went through with COVID, a lot of people suffer financially. And when a household suffers financially or, or whatever it is, it may not even have been a COVID. Maybe somebody lost the breadwinner in their home, you know, to death or illnesses or something. 
when a financial loss takes place, you have to determine where you're going to make a sacrifice at. And the first thing we we often start with is the credit cards, right? We, we decided we're not going to make a credit card payment because either it's our mortgage or our rent or our car note, the groceries, the children's school, education, things like that. We start prioritizing what's going to be first. So I can't, I, I just really disagree with like saying, oh, well, her credit or his credit is a little bit jacked up. Let's find out, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, what caused that. Some people just have lack of credit education and don't understand it, right? And, you know, or you've had some hiccups along the road, something happened, we just don't know. If you look at power couples, every power couple wasn't built because they had great credit when they came together. One probably built the other's credit up. They both probably had bad credit, but it started with a mindset to say, hey, I want more, I want better. Let's get you where you need to be. So it's really it's really your mindset and where you look at people and how you decide what, you're going to treat somebody how you want to be treated if you are in that situation. I agree. Well, there's a little pushback. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about let's it. Push. Yeah, okay. let's, let's talk about it. Now, there are some things you said that I do agree with because I, I don't think you should totally discard a person based on their credit because i've heard people say like nah i can't rock mm -hmm. her because her credit score is is 550 <laughs> you know <laughs> it's kind of understandable I, I heard a quote that that said the way our relationship with money is our relationship like the way we treat people mm -hmm. I, I think money is a relationship too it is you know your your personal relationship so i'm saying all that to say this person you decide to marry them and they might not be the best with finances but having financial differences causes a lot of uh, marriages a lot of people to divorce because somebody might be a, a bad steward over the money so and, and granted sometimes you do have relationships well shoot most of the times you you have a somebody who who's the spender and who's the saver Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to have a, a shared vision and where you're trying to go. So if you want to buy a pro if you want to buy property, I think it's important that we eliminate debt, that whole kind of thing. But I would personally prefer somebody who is decent with finances as opposed to somebody who maybe just see finances as just like disposable, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And of course, I would I would prefer somebody that has, you know, <laughs> their finances together too. Yeah. But what I'm saying, I wouldn't totally, I, I, I wouldn't totally say I agree with just discarding somebody because they have, you know, a little bit of credit issues and something, you know, weak in the area of, you know, they have some work to do. Um, of course, you know, like you said, financial responsibility. You know, that relationship that you have with your finances, when we reach that thresh threshold, what is that like? What does that look like? Right. Because we are going to examine um, why is your credit this way? Why is your spending this way? And then with that, I say, you know, going into marriages, intention, dating intentionally, looking at you know, with the intentions that you have, not so much of having a checklist of what a person can and cannot have, but the intentions on what you really want, what you can and can't live with. Um, and then bringing that stuff up front when you're meeting somebody and you're thinking, you know, this may be the person. Um, this is my person. I want to be serious with this person. Um being transparent, you know, communicating the intentions and then getting into those particular um, conversations that that could be, you know, a deal breaker moving forward in a marriage. I think if people would date more intentionally and putting things out there up front, you would have less less marital issues and less divorce because, you know, there was a clear line of communication with intentions. Mm -hmm. Because I was doing some research the other day that show only 15%, 15 to 20% of people who go, because I, I do pre-engagement, right? Mm -hmm. 15 to 20% of people who get engaged 
that's the number that break off of of, of a marriage. I mean, it breaks off the engagement. Only 15 wow. or 20 percent. So that means they went and seen a pastor or whoever. And <laughs> only 15 to 20 percent was like, you know what? This is not going to work. Not going to work. Statistics, not for me, from what I've seen, I think that number should be higher. No it shame. Should. Yeah. It's, but I, it should be. I agree. It should be. Yeah. Because, and I believe too, some of that has been, maybe they didn't discuss finances because she was fine or he was six foot two and he took you to, to the expensive restaurant and, and he got a, a, two he got a thousand, yeah, he got the, the, the baddest car. I mean, she got a YSL purse and they living it up, but we we look good, but what does that look under what does that look beneath the surface? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. and but, that comes back to the, the 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 financial stability, right? Right. How are you managing your money? And I also think looking at financial stability also means not how much money you have. Because I hear a lot of people, I can't date somebody if they're unless they're six figures or higher, right? But that's that doesn't define financial stability, right? The stability is longevity. How long have you maintained that employment? How long have you been able to maintain residence, right? The longevity of, of these things that have allowed you to have that financial flow, whether it's six figures or under, whatever it is. And, and sometimes I think people get caught up in in the social, you know, the social world, you know, all the trends and, oh, I need a six figure or 2% woman, 1% uh, woman, 2% man. And a lot of, a lot of times they don't have the stability in the finances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they want you to carry that load. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and let me say something real quick to the listeners, because and there's nothing wrong with living your best life. That's what you do. That's what you do. No shade. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not mad. Right. But if you plan on doing life with somebody long term, I think it is important. I would rather have, you know, fifty thousand dollars put up to the side than trying to look cute for somebody. You know, that's that's just my take. But uh, no shade. So please don't come for us in the comments because somebody going to come in the comments and start talking crazy. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't 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 chop my head off. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Now, real quick, the last thing I want to talk about finances, how do you how do you have that conversation with someone about finances? So say we're on a date, right? Mm -hmm. We're kicking it. And well, maybe this is say maybe this is the third or fourth date. OK. How, how do you have a conversation about finances just to kind of see it the way they think about money? Like, give us some of your secret secret sauce, Kim. How do you have, what, what would you say? Do you say, uh, I don't know, but just without somebody getting offended. Okay, so here's the thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody don't, everybody doesn't want to talk about finding. I, I think Certain things you have to have a comfort level for, right? So if there are three or four dates that has taken place and that person has made you feel like there's a safe space for giving information and asking questions, then I think then I think then you, the, the door is open, right? And I think asking those financial questions, um, it could be real surface, you know, starting with, you know, OK, so I know what you do. You know, you've told me what you do for a living. You know, I see where we're dining at. You know, is this something you do often? Like, talk. let's talk about vacations. How often do you take vacations? Right. Traveling. You know, I'm somebody I, I'm starting to like to travel a lot. Right. But. The way I budget to travel, and I travel once a month, 
And I'm not traveling to, you know, extravagant places and spending a whole lot of money. That's my self-care. I, I leave my state and go to another state once a month to just relax and do my self-care. And then I come back home and I regroup. But it's, it, I'm budgeting to do that. So if I give that to somebody that I'm I'm dating and getting to know, you know, they're like, oh, OK, big spender. Um, how you doing all that? And and this is and this is how I this is how I present it. You know, it's it's not like that. You know, I'm not flying first class and you know buying eight hundred dollar wine bottles or all that crazy stuff. You know, <laughs> so I really just think like you you ask the questions that they've already given you information. You know, follow up questions with the information they've already allowed you um, that information too. Because if 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 you open that door and give me some, something about you, I feel like you obviously you trust me to communicate with you about certain things, you know, your finances, if we're talking about your job. So, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let, let's go there, you know, in a respectable way, you know, and I'm open to the same things. So I think um, mute, like having those mutual respect and giving each other that mutual com com confidence and comfort to have certain conversations about financing and, you know, going there and then, you know, always putting it out there saying, you know, well, if my credit is not so good, listen, what's going on with your credit? You don't, don't feel like you have to tell me, but you, you know, you're telling me, but, you know, I always make a person feel like it's safe to talk to you about, you know, the things that you're inquiring about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that, that's good. I, I respect that because I've heard from clients to people I know that's dating. They were going to date and have the, the finance discussion, finances discussion. And a lot of people say people get frustrated. They get mad. They get defensive just from having that conversation, which to me shows that, OK, well, maybe this is a sensitive area for you. Maybe uh -huh. maybe you're not balling right now, you know, <laughs> so. Um, and that's yeah. why I asked that question because somebody listening or watching, they they might not know how to take that approach. So I'm glad you said that. Yeah, or they may not ha know how to receive it, right? Mm -hmm. And you no, know, you just have to understand, you know, what doors you're opening for if someone is asking asking that question and, and wanting to know where you are with your finances. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's all it's all about respectable communication and. You know, setting a particular tone for someone to feel like, you know, if I decline to give you that information right now, we, we we're still good. We can move forward. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure. That's yeah. That's 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 grown woman talk right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I want to continue to talk about home ownership and okay. just from your experience <laughs> or what you might have seen. Do you find more married couples buying property together or? boyfriend girlfriend relationships buying property together what do you see more of so as a realtor i have seen more of unmarried couples purchasing homes together um but research shows that you still have more uh married couples purchasing home now about 30 years ago you had a higher percentage of married couples purchasing versus unmarried. That has shifted. So although you still have you st you still have more you still have more married people um you still have more married people purchase you have you have more married people purchasing, but the number is still spiking with unmarried people as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. what what is your what is your advice on that girlfriend boyfriend buying property how, how do you feel about that all right so um let me just say i'm not a lawyer you don't take me for any legal advice <laughs> i want to write a little disclaimer oh uh, we shouldn't do it and you know i want nobody breaking up their relationship or they going to the closing table and, and y'all don't show up and, and close go and close <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> But what I what my personal opinion, I me personally, I would not purchase a home with a unmarried partner unless we are 
uh, unless we're married. Because because let's be honest, I was going to say engage and the marriage is already planned, but people run away at the altar and the marriage does not happen. Um, you will find out who the person really are oftentimes once you're married and everything has been joined. And if you join something, a big asset like a property and you're not married and trying to get out of that, I mean, granted, you have to have a divorce and get out of a property, but doing that with someone that you're not even married to, um, the emotional and mental side of it, I believe, is um, is a lot more worse. Um, because you did you you truly don't have a real commitment to the person. And when you have to go through something so huge like that with someone that you don't have a commitment, because let's be real, if you have a true commitment, then the marriage would have taken place. Yes. Oftentimes when you're when you're dating for years on years, that's not really a true commitment. There's some type of unsurety there about that person. And they're just there until you find the surety that you need in somebody else. And I think there's certain feelings and emotion, emotions that would not would not exist. And then if you go through that process of having to separate from a property, y'all not married, it, it's going to be bad. It's, it's, not, it's just not good. It's not good to do. Um, I've actually dealt with that before. Um, so... Boyfriend, girlfriend. Do you do you do you mind to discuss it or no? <laughs> um, if not, that's okay. No, nope, no, nope. it's just sometimes personal experience. Yeah, know. I mean, yeah. like they were in, they were engaged. Mm -hmm. She had this nice big old ring. I think the ring probably cost more than the house. <laughs> <laughs> but two years into purchasing the home. Now we're in the process of trying to list the home sale so they can get the proceeds. But this is what happens. If one sees that the other has more interest in, okay, let's get this over with. We, we're breaking up. I'm not happy. I want to get out of the house. Then the other one, and married people do this too. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. But then you have the girlfriend or the boyfriend delaying the process like, nah, I don't want to sell. I don't want it to. I don't want to do it. Let's go on. Let, let's let the property go into foreclosure because you know what? Only way we were able to afford this mortgage anyways is part of my income. So I'm not giving my part of the mortgage because sometimes when people see what really matters to you, they weaponize it. Mm. So when you want out and let's, let's get it done, they see that you want out and you want to sell and hey, we can, we can go down the middle on the proceeds. But they see that, but they're so vexed and upset and angry. They start dismissing the fact that it's going to still be a financial uh, win for them, right? You don't, if your, your credit won't take a hit. You'll put the money back in your pocket. You'll get some equity out of it, even though the relationship didn't work. They don't see all that. So they'll drag the process out. He's dragging the process out. Letting a home go into foreclosure, you know, and then I'm in and then the realtor's out. Then she's in and she's out like, no, then, OK, they want to work it out. And then they don't want to work it out. You know, so you have all these different things where and then you, then the marriage still never takes place. Wow. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, it but, is. Yeah. And, and that's why I just asked the question, because. Sometimes people just kind of need to hear stories or, you know, hear different scenarios um, mm -hmm. to kind of make it a little more relatable, you know? Because even yeah. sometimes we sometimes we can throw out statistics and people be like, yeah, but my cousin or, <laughs> you know, that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. My cousin or, you know, my mom and. And, and my dad did it for 30 years and they never got married. Well, you know, whatever it took for them to do it and get through it, you know, that's them. But everybody's situation isn't the same. Um, and so, yeah, you you run into certain things in 
You just got to know the person that you making certain type of decisions with. No, that's right. I side note, it's, it's funny we discussing this. I'm I just thought about this. I remember my wife and I were dating long distance because I met her on. I don't know if you know the story, but I met her on Instagram and uh, we married. We we married like six months after meeting, and it was a long distance relationship. But one of our yeah, one of our issues was who's going to move where. Mm -hmm. Am I going to move to Texas or is she's going to move to Arizona? Because that's where we were. And I told her, I said, there's no way I'm going to move from Arizona if there's not a ring on your finger. I'm mm -hmm. not about to be your boyfriend relocating because we can have a bad fallout. Next thing you know, I'm in a whole different state, you know, and, and yep. you know, we might not make it. Who knows? But I was like, if I marry you, yeah, I'll be out there. But boyfriend, girlfriend, no. I, I'm 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 too old for that. I'm, at the time I was 40. So I was like, I'm too, I'm too old for this stuff to just, you know, be relocating um uh, as a boyfriend, girlfriend. But to each his own, that might might have worked for other people. I'm just saying for me and my and my comfort, I needed to know. I was like, yeah, so and that wasn't the deciding factor, but I just wanted to make sure I had clarity and knowing that she was going to be my wife and then I'll relocate. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So my response to that is because I, I have a friend, um, she's dating long distance. I've dated long distance and we're literally probably a month ago, we're having this conversation and she asked me, are you willing to move long distance Prior to or after marriage, and my and my my response to that was, when you're dating somebody long distance, you really don't. Okay, without effort, you don't get that time to know who that person really is in the physical, right? And I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to marry somebody. Then I go live with them. <laughs> and then it's like, who the this is person? He ain't nothing like what he was when I was going to see him or when he was coming to see me. And so so it's kind of like you gotta pick and choose, right? What risks are you willing to take when you're dating long distance? Um you know, some people say they're okay with dating long distance. And then some people, they can't because then they start feeling like, well, I need you around all the time. I need you here. Um, to me, that, that falls kind of in a category of being selfish. Because if you engage somebody long distance, you got to know it's long distance. That being here in an um, early stage where that person is getting to know each other, that's not possible. Like you, I'm not going to meet somebody and I'm moving in three months later, six months later, unless I'm moving off of faith. And that got to be like some real confirmed faith. Like, <laughs> like, you know, God got to come and sit on the bed. Like, I need you there now. You need to go. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, long distance is, is like for you, it worked, you know, because, and I get it, you know, I don't want to be, but for me, it's just kind of like, I have my own home. I, if, if I dated long distance and I had to go move with somebody six months, I like going to different states, you know, so getting up and go is just, is, you know, is this part of the, the life that, I, that I'm that i living right now? Um, I get to experience the world. So going and seeing like, is this really my person? I want to be around you enough before I make a real commitment to spend the rest of my life with you versus Oh, well, we were seeing each other X, Y, and Z, and now I'm here every day and I can't take this. Now I need a divorce. So <laughs> yeah, I see that. No, that's no, that's great. That's a that's because that's a different perspective, right? So mm -hmm. no, I re I respect that. I, I get it because I was I was thinking the total opposite, you know. But <laughs> right. but for but but for me, I understood how important commitment was to her mm -hmm. and, and and again we both wanted to marry well I was 
I was going to remarry because I was I was married for 15 years before. OK. And she wanted to marry. So and, and it's something I always tell single people, too, because I'm like people say they want to get married. I'm like, well, does that other person want to get married, too? Because I think a lot of people don't even have that conversation. They just like, oh, we kicking it. Things are good. But in the back of your head, you want to get married. They don't. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to have that conversation. Um, And if you don't want to get married, and that's cool, too. But if you want to get married, you got to find somebody who's willing to (laughs) want to get married, too. And are y'all the perfect fit for each other? Yeah, it goes back to intentions, right? When you meet someone out the door, like what's what's your intentions? Um, and I think always being honest and being able to communicate. A lot of people don't know how to communicate and or they are afraid to communicate out of fear of rejection, right? If I tell them what I want, I'm someone that wants to settle down. I don't want to casual, casually date. I want to get married. Oh, they're not going to want to talk to me anymore. They're going to ghost me. If if that person ghosts you, that's not the person for you, you know? So you you have to communicate what your needs are, what you want, what you're looking for. Because if you don't, you definitely will be putting in a lot of wasted time. It could happen. You can put in that wasted time with someone um, just thinking, you know, because they, they may have other intentions. Their intention, you know, you get people that say, um, mm, Men a lot as well say they want to settle down. And I think that's just conversational for uh, most men that say that. I don't think a lot of men mean it. (laughs) They say it because it's conversational um, because they think that that's what the woman wants to hear when he meets her. Right. But he may not have intentions on settling down. So you have to ask and and pay attention to the actions. Right. Because sometimes um, people, men and women, they can say and present. So you're 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 pre- you're saying it is your presentation, but you have to see the actions moving forward. Do what are they doing to show you that they want to settle down? They want to be exclusive. They're serious about marriage. They're serious about family relationships, and you know all these financial uh, things that we're talking about. It it falls in the action. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, because there were times where, of course, because. My wife and I, we when we were dating, we once we married, there was still almost a year time until I relocated. So it still mm-hmm. took another six months. So mm-hmm. after we married, it still was another six months until I relocated. Now, and I guess my piece of advice for anybody who's listening or watching is there's always going to be twists and turns. Everything isn't always and cement everything isn't always just in concrete writing you know there will be things that you still just have to learn about the person you <clears throat> you can you can be with somebody for six years and still not know them. that is true you know that is they're very much true yeah because we're always evolving we're always changing and if you aren't in sync with that person and where they're headed in life or the way they think because the way they think when they were 25, they think different out of the 35. Mm-hmm. But if you aren't aware of that, if you aren't in sync with that person, they'll change before your very eyes. And that's why you'll get people, they've been married for 15, 20 years. And you wake up one morning and you're like, I want a divorce. Because you, yeah. you no longer know that person. You, you haven't stayed in contact with each other. Um so that's why I'm always for just one woman because I'm like I, I I can barely keep up with the wife I have now. The one you have, right? <laughs> yeah, and people be trying to, you know, I I, I want multiple wives, and I'm like, you can barely keep up with the one you have. Right, and then everybody get the same good morning text. I'm gonna just copy and paste. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> it's, it, it's 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 too much. It's too much. Just focus on one person. Yeah. Focus on one person. Oh my God. Yeah. I think today in today's social media age, we have too many options, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And 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 something you said, um, being with somebody for so long and not knowing who they are, even putting in that time. I think sometimes too, you don't know that person that you've invested into because sometimes you never found out who you were. And when you I when you start 
self-reflecting and identifying who you truly are, then you start understanding what you need in somebody else, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And that's just like on all levels, right? Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, um, you start having, um, you, you start evolving, right? And then you see that person differently and you're like, okay, because now I know who I am. I now know my value. I know, you know, what I want. I know what works for me, what, what makes me go, what makes me, you know, um, a better operate as that woman and that man that I am destined to be. So sometimes we don't know who we are when we're joined to somebody. And then when, once we do find out who we are, then we realize, okay, I really didn't know that person because I didn't know me. That's a real I think I'm going to share that. That's that's like an <laughs> Instagram reel, just that piece that you said right there. That's, yeah, yeah. that's good. Because a lot of people don't know themselves. And, a lot, and, and I realized, Kim, that a lot of people don't even know what they want. They don't. Mm -mm. They just see somebody fine and that's what they want. And then once they find out this person, they're like, oh, I don't like them anymore. Or, you know, it's, oh, so much. You know what I call that? That's like, that's like testing the waters, right? You see somebody... You don't know what you want, or they may not even be what you want, but it's something that about them that challenges you or just intrigues you. So you test the water. So people are jumping in waters that they can't swim in, but they're floating, right? <laughs> it, it, that's what it is. Like You're wasting people's time. You, you can't figure yourself out. And then this is why you have these cycles of short-lived relationships. And then when after a while you look at the time and you realize you really not you really haven't had true or you feel like you haven't had true long term commitment because you're trying to you're testing waters that you can't swim in. Mm. So you can. So there are people that's literally out of your league then. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't say out of your league because that sounds like a little harsh. I would say there are people that are not aligned for you, right? Um, and sometimes because we society has made us believe that having a particular type of person that has a particular their career or title or they look a certain way um this is ideal for me and my image i want this i want that and then we we go after that not knowing that that's that's not for us that's not what we're like that doesn't balance us right that doesn't um complete us that part that we need in that in that part that's good i like that ah, yeah that's good <laughs> You should you should uh, do relationship coaching on the side. <laughs> um, true story. I started getting my my um relationship coaching uh, life coach certification, and I kind of put it to the side. So, yeah. But I hey, who knows? I might pick it back up because I love I love to talk. I love to talk, and and I love to talk with meaning right intention always trying to give something helpful so mm -hmm. yeah for sure for sure yeah we need we need more kims out here hey absolutely <laughs> bonus bomb <laughs> yes what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships hmm. <clears throat> i think showing um vulnerability too soon to a man um trusting because he's talking and presenting. So what I mean by that is um, a lot of women want a man that he's kind. He, he has mannerism, right? He's, he's thoughtful. He checks on me. He, he says these particular things. Um, he holds the door for me. He opens the door. You know, he does all these idea things that we think are kind gestures. 
Um, he says he wants to get married. He says he's big on family. Um, and so he says some of these things, but he's presenting the minimum. But because that's what we're seeing, we're thinking, okay, this is the guy. This is him. And then we start giving this man too much of us up front because now we're thinking we're in a safe space we've now become vulnerable and feel like we're in a safe space with him. Oh, he's earned my trust because he's saying everything that I need him to say. And I think sometimes, you know, women out of fear, like, and I'm not saying good men don't do that. And I do that. And then they end up showing up later in the action side of it, in the action area, because they do. But you also have good men that are jerks as well. Right. If, if he if he could he could very well be a good man. But if he doesn't have intentions on um, putting the presentation into action. And it could be just something else that he wants and you give him that. Then he's going to ghost you afterwards. So I think don't be so vulnerable um, because he's presenting something to you. He has to let him put in that more effort, right? Even if you have to hold back on physical things, even like just kissing sometimes, because a lot of men, they, they want to kiss like early on. <laughs> like, you know, you know, even with kissing and sex and that type of stuff or being intimate too close, you know, because sometimes men perceive that if I can kiss her or if I can hold her, then I can go all the way. And if you have to hold back in those areas, you have to trust your judgment. You have to feel like, okay, is he willing to give me more because he because he really, really, really likes me? He really wants to see where this is going. And so, you know, it's a give and take. And you just have to, you have to figure out what risk are you willing to run with that man? Are you willing to run the risk and give him too much too soon? And he ends, he ends up going in another direction? Or are you willing to run that risk and hold back to see if he's willing to run the risk and say, I'm going to stand, I'm going to stay because I feel like she's the one. I see quality and value in this woman, although I'm anxious in it, you know, because it is what it is. We're human, right? We're flesh. But, you know, not so much of testing him, but you know, you, you have to stand on the value of you as a woman and who you are, because if, if you continue to put your vulnerability out there to a man, you are, you, you're going to become a cycle, um, not being able to see that guy all the way through. Is he going to put his actions to his words? Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that because, and then that also teaches boundaries too, right? Absolutely. I think you get see if somebody really respect your boundaries. Like, no, we can't kiss or hold hands right now, or you know, mm -hmm. just that thing, just the, the respect of boundaries. Because some people, when you put set boundaries in place, they oh, you stuck up, and so now you can really find out about the character. Right, right. How they respond to your rejection, right? Because your rejection is. It, it, I'm not rejecting you in a bad way. I'm rejecting you because I need boundaries. I need time. Let's take baby steps. Let's go slow. I'm still, I'm trying to figure you out and see who you are. And sometimes if you don't set those boundaries and they presented something to you and you thought it was, because, you know, women, we we talk about guys when we meet guys, right? Like, girl, he, he did this and he did this and he said that. And, you know, I've been waiting for somebody to talk to me like this. And, you know, and so we do get caught up in how a man uses his words and, you know, some of his kind gestures. And then we forget about, you know, really examining his intentions, you know, how he's actually moving with you day out of day. Is he consistent with his communication, right? Is he, how does he respond when you say no to something or when you say I can't, or when you say not right now, maybe later, you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes people, when they get comfortable with talking to you or you responding right away, fall back sometimes. Um, I'm busy today. I just can't drop the phone and text you today. But if he's like in his feelings because you didn't text right away, you know, you you get your red flags. You start getting red flags. So you have to just give, give things time and don't give them too much up front. Mm, I like that. So how real quick, and this, this, <laughs> Since we're here, <laughs> what if you tell me what you think? If a man says, 
I'm I'm holding out on sex until I get married. Like, is is do do women desire that, or because? And I know it's not common, but does would that throw a woman off, or would she continue to to pursue him if he's like, hey, I don't, I understand the sanctity of sex and stuff like that. I I want to hold off as well, so I'm not going to be as aggressive or things of that nature. Like, how 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 will women respond to that? Um, I think a woman, yeah, would respond to that with respect. Mm. Um. I think just as way my my thing is you have to treat people the way you want somebody to treat you. And so if if we we as women have certain boundaries or we expect certain things from a man and if a man is, expects that we have to be respectable to that as well. And if that's something I think that um, you're not willing to give then be honest, be transparent. I, I I literally had this conversation with another guy a couple months ago, um, you know, and his response was he, you know, if the woman wanted to do that and he was really into her, well, he said he would have a conversation that, listen, I, I get it. I really want to be with you. I, I, but I need to see where it's going with marriage. I just need you to know I'm going to be doing me with other people. And it's just going to be about sex then. Now, I didn't agree with that because sex does not create love, but you could create some other attachment that will leave that person out what you were already trying to create with them because you thought you were just doing sex over here. And now you've created something over here and you thought it was sex. And now something else has become attached to there's a relationship there. And now this person that is still waiting for you to decide if you guys are going to get married and have sex, you got a whole mess going. So I don't, I don't agree to that method. Um, but I just think it's, it's, it's about respect. You have to respect what a person wants for their body. Um, and saying, you know, is is just that's what it is. And I think, I think, you know, a, a mature woman would respect something like that. You know, of course there will be questions, um, outside of religion belief, if it's anything else, you know, curious mind, like, okay, well, what's going on? <laughs> See, that's what I wanted to, that's what I was wondering, like, <laughs> is that the default setting of most women? Like, is he, you know, is he playing for both teams or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? And, and I guess because it's such an anomaly that you, you, you want to inquire, I guess. But, and I'm, and I'm not saying like what happened in the scenario with the guy where he's like, I'm going to sleep around with other women and sit like I that's bogus. I don't I'm not a fan of that. But mm -hmm. he just literally feels he just literally respects his body. It absolutely and and you and you want to be connected to somebody that respects that. You know, if if I was dealing with a guy and he told me that and I did not want to wait, it's mm -hmm. it, it's it's clear that I'm not with him because I want to be with him. Mm -hmm. I'm there because I want his body. I want I want the physical part of the relationship. I'm not trying to, you know, understand or connect with you mentally, emotionally, you know, I'm not going to the deeper parts of the relationship that really will matter. Um so, you know, yeah, you just got to figure out, you know, what you really want and then give people that opportunity to decide what they want for themselves by being honest and upfront with them. Mm -hmm. yeah i respect that in a teacher's own yeah absolutely from seeing your parents relationship what did it teach you about marriage um hmm. commitment that the commitment is greater than anything mm. um my mother and my father never married, but I have a stepfather. Okay. And I've seen my stepfather withstand things with my mom and his stepchildren. And that showed that the love was so profound that he was able to, um, you know, honor his commitment to her. I've always said that it's impossible to love a person and not love their children, although their children aren't yours. Mm -hmm. 
if I love you, I have to love what what comes with you, what's attached to you. That that's your DNA. That is that is you. That's part of you. So I can't I can't meet a man that has kids and eventually spend all this time and grow with him, and I not grow and love his children as well. If that's the case, I do not love you. That is not. I don't believe that that's possible. And so watching my mom and, and my stepdad uh, marriage through, you know, no, they haven't had a perfect marriage. Nobody has a perfect marriage. Um, I, I've really seen what love looks like um, in their marriage and the commitment through, you know, all the family um, ups and downs and chaos. And, you know, somebody that does not have children with my mother um, they're standing for her kids and her grandkids and and being real active and a part of that and showing that love and um, responsibilities, even when it came with sacrifices. That's good. Love it. Last question. There's no right or wrong answer to this. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? I think it's easier to love someone else. And the reason I say that is it shouldn't be that way, but the way society is, we have, we are sponges to what we should be, what, what we should look like, what we should have, right? And we're our worst critics, excuse me. So when, when we mess up or when we feel like we lack something or when we're just you know, because everybody deals with something internally that they cannot profess loudly sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when you deal with those particular um, issues about yourself, you start to to find out that you're lacking love for yourself. And it's easier to project the love into somebody else than it is to project it into yourself and start, you know, just fixing Mm -hmm. Fixing you, right? It's easy to just, I can fix everybody else. And and that's something I found out about myself too. Okay. It was like, I was always like the shoulder for everybody, right? Somebody could call and what do you think about this? I got this going on. And sometimes I'm listening to myself and I'm like, you're giving the best advice. Like, girl, where did that come from? And it's like, but you got your own stuff going on. Why you are not doing that for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that I, I didn't have love for me. I think it was um it wasn't sufficient enough to to show myself that self-love that I needed because I was always pouring it into somebody else because it felt easy. I didn't have to deal with the stuff that I was dealing with, right? It was it was a diversion. Pour into somebody else, deal with their issue, deal with their stuff, and I don't have to worry about mine. Leave mine in the dark closet. And, you know, I'll come, I'll pick it up later. And I never did. And then when I realized what I was doing, it's like, no, self-love, you know, take care of yourself. Self-love is real big. And I like that um, a lot of people are hashtagging self-love and they're really talking about it and really trying to be in that moment. And I think real, real self-love is being able to be happy without being in a relationship and nobody else defining your happiness for you because nobody can give you happiness that is yours to create for yourself and then you can share it with somebody but being able to be alone to be a single person and still have joy still have peace and be happy and just like i can't wait for somebody to come so they can experience all this happiness and joy i have um that's true love for you mm -hmm. and you know so yeah i think um it's more of it's easy to love somebody else because then we get to run away from the things that we just don't want to deal with um, about ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And I, I respect that because I think a lot of people struggle with that. Shoot, I've, I've had times where I've struggled with that. It's just easier to just kind of love on somebody else. And like you say, kind of put yeah. yourself to the side. But I think when you discover what you love about you, I think it makes it easier for other people to start loving on you. It does. It really does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And set, setting those boundaries and it's like, you have to have those boundaries so that you can continue to have that, that balance for yourself 
and people that respect it, they will fall in line with that. It'll become foreign, foreign to them, but if they respect you and they love you, they will fall in line with watching you love on you because if you look at it, if, you know, and I, I tell my kids, if I'm not good, if I'm no good for myself, I'm no good for you. I got to take care of me. I got to try to keep me together so that when I am needed, I'm at my best for anybody else. Yep. I always tell people you can't pour from an empty cup. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, Kim, this has been a phenomenal episode. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to be a guest and answering a call and saying yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you it's so fun. much. It's been a phenomenal episode. Can you let everyone know how to get in touch with you? Um, I am on Instagram, Kimmy L. The Realtor. You can find me on Facebook, Kimmy L. The Realtor. Um, any questions that you have about real estate, I work with relocating clients all over. It doesn't matter what state you are in. I have referral partners everywhere that will take care of you. I do have a team that is amazing. Um, any questions about you know credit or getting a loan, down payment assistance, you can always DM me, um, call me. My phone number is also in my bio. I am available. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Brave Parts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Kim because she has phenomenal uh, content as well as a wealth of information to be able to help you. Make sure if you're watching this, that you hit the subscribe button and that you share this video. I'm trying to get into people group chats. I realize that I get more views when my content is in people group, group chats. So, <laughs> so share this video with a friend in your group chat. And also share it on social media. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? So you heard it here. Bravehearts community. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Kimmy L. The Realtor. All right, Bravehearts community. Take care. Bye. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.